Hey, what's up, chitheads? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the brand new Telaria Sting MX-5 here. I just got this bike today, and as a matter of fact, I just finished putting it together. So we're gonna go over all the specs and features, show you what's new and improved about this model over the MX-4. Guys, and I'm gonna show you how I got this bike for absolutely free using this brand new trick I learned off of TikTok called the Chase Infinite Money Hack. But that's enough small talk. What do you say we go ahead and get right into it? Come on, let's go. Oh, I almost forgot. Since we're doing a video on an emoto, I need to be wearing my full face helmet. I got a copy of Sir Ronser just like everyone else, right? So here we are up close and personal with the Talia Sting MX-5. It's a really nice looking bike. And for I gather, it's the same frame as the MX-4, so it's not going to be visually very much different looking except for the battery lid is a has a raised section on it but you know more on that in a little bit right off the front the front the new front fork this is a 180 millimeter travel and it sounds like they've made some improvements to it i can't tell you the exact improvements they've made but it specifies dual spring and air you have your compression knob here you have your rebound knob over here as compared to a lot of other forks has a rebound on the bottom and if you hear look here this is where you can adjust your preload, the spring preload right here. The thing I wanted to point out on these front forks is to say they're air and spring. So you look here at the bottom, there is a Schrader valve. So it looks like you can also adjust the air pressure on each of these fork stanchions. So it's a different looking fork design from what I'm used to. Uh, just for reference, guys, I've been riding an E-Ride Pro coming into this one. I've ridden my friend's Telaria Sting MX-4 approximately one time. So I'm not... Not exactly a uh, what you call an expert. You know, I do have quite the background in uh, dirt bikes. I've been riding dirt bikes for, man, was it eight or nine months now. But you check it out here, right up in the front, this new brake line, this thing is beefy. Look how thick this brake line is here. And that goes down to these new 220 millimeter by three millimeter thick brake rotors. These brake rotors are beefy. These feel solid. And that is paired with these four piston hydraulic disc brakes. These don't look like the typical brakes you see on mountain bikes. These look like actual dirt bike brakes. These are beefy. The pad area has been significantly increased. These just all around look like a huge upgrade. All in all, the brakes on my E-Ride Pro, I feel are fairly adequate, but these, I haven't tried them yet. I'm anticipating these brakes to be very strong. You can see here the uh, brake handles are branded Telaria and they look very solid, very nice looking brakes in general on this bike. One thing is different I've noticed on this bike from the E-Ride and a lot of other bikes is that the brake sensors are just right here. So if you want to disconnect your brake sensor, it's as easy as that. You don't have to disconnect. You don't have to take anything else apart. You can have your brake sensor disconnected in seconds. You got your front headlight here. Now you know this looks pretty similar to the front headlight on the MX-4. Not a huge fan. I definitely prefer the front headlight that's on the E-Ride Pro. That's a really nice headlight. Moving right along, one of the things I really like about this one is it has a regenerative braking switch here. So when you're riding, you can hit this and it'll use your regenerative braking on demand. And as well as that, you can also set it in the, the computer to have it on regenerative level one, two, three, or four, just like a lot of other dirt bikes. But personally for me, I always ride with the regenerative braking off, but now I have a feeling I'll be using it quite a bit because you can just use it on demand rather than turning on and off. So this battery is a 72 volt, 40 amp hour. This is an upgrade from the 60 volt system that's on the Telaria Sting MX-4. And it has this nice single connector here. So when you go to take off your battery with the lid in place, you'll notice you can't. So you actually have to take off the lid. I mean, it's easy to do. You take the lid right off to pull out the battery. Overall, it's not a huge deal, but just wanted to mention that. Another thing that sticks out about the MX-5 is you'll notice there is no breaker in this bike. So I'm not sure if there's a fusible link or something here that's gonna stop it if there's a over current protection or something. This bike doesn't have a typical breaker like you see in most E-Motos. So here we have the battery. This is the 72 volt 40 amp hour battery that comes in Solaria. This is the E-Ride Pro's 72 volt 40 amp hour battery. You can see they're roughly the same size. The Solaria battery looks to be a little bit on the bigger side and I believe these use Samsung 50S cells. One of the most impressive things about this battery system to me isn't necessarily the battery it's this charger it comes with now get this guys e-ride pro comes with a 10 amp charger so you can charge this thing in four hours 
This comes with a 15 amp charger. Now that is insane. Let's see exactly how much power this thing pulls. Okay guys, I got the charger plugged into the, my solar generator here. You know, it's not the easiest to do this stuff with one hand. Okay, we're plugged in now, let's see. Okay, we're up 300 watts, 400, 500, 600, 849, 900, 1062, 1200 watts. That's crazy, it's still going. We're at 1300 watts right now, about 1240, 89 watts. This thing pulls a significant amount of wattage. I'm not even sure that's at the full 15 amps right now. I anticipate that some people are gonna have problems with this thing popping circuits, depending on how many amps their uh, outlet is rated at. So there you have it. We're seeing 1,285, but let's call it 1,300 watts. Solaria says that they can charge this battery from dead to full in three hours. I think that is pretty amazing. Down here, you'll see here is the 72 volt controller. Now this controller is 5,500 watts nominal and puts out a peak of 13.4 kilowatt hours. Compare that to 5,000 watts for the E-Ride and a peak of 12,000 watts. And that goes hand in hand with the new updated motor here. Talaria says this motor has updated cooling and is now 95% efficient, where the last motor on the MX-4 was a pathetic 94% efficient. Oh, gross. I also wanted to point out that this bike does come with the vinyl wrap, which I plan on putting on at some point, but I wanted to show you guys the way that it comes without the wrap. And another thing I wanted to point out was that this bike did take a hit along the way. So you can see here, there's a nice bit of exposed aluminum on the frame. Another thing is the Telaria Sting MX-5 has an updated seat with more cushion. And this is definitely nice and soft feeling. One of my complaints with the E-Ride Pro was the seat. You can see here I put a different seat cover on it, but there's not a whole lot of padding underneath the seat. It's, a, it's doable, I got used to it. I can do a 35, 40 mile ride on this thing, pretty much no problem. But I do welcome the addition of additional padding on the seat. So I have high hopes that this seat is gonna be very comfortable. This bike comes with the same CST tires you see on a lot of dirt bikes. These are 19 and the front is 70 by 100 and the rear are a bigger 80 by 100. But what's nice is these wheels are these straight spokes here. These look really beefy. These wheels look nice and solid. So overall, this bike looks like it has a really nice solid foundation for everything you're gonna to wanna to do in an Emoto. You can see the Solaria comes with these nice CNC machined foot pegs. Now that's one of the things that 90% of people probably end up doing is upgrading their foot pegs. But I believe the foot pegs from the factory on this one are pretty well good enough. Give you a close up of the rear shock here. Talaria factory suspension. This is rated at 85 millimeters of travel and with linkage. And the thing is with the rear shock, the shock itself has 85 millimeters of travel, but it goes through the different leverages of the suspension. So I don't know exactly how much level suspension travel there is in the rear, but the shock is 85 millimeters. And this has your three adjustments. You have your rebound here on the bottom. The compression is way up at the top. And to adjust the preload, you need to tighten this collar here to put more or less tension on the spring. Come around here to the other side. We've got this nice 48 tooth rear sprocket. It has a 108 tooth chain, stronger than the old chain on the MX-4, so it won't stretch. And here we go over here, we have a gearbox. So if you look at the E-Ride Pro, the E-Ride Pro has a belt drive that goes from the electric motor to the jack shaft, which goes to the jack shaft, which goes to the drive chain. Now, the Tilaria uses a gearbox, and supposedly this has a stronger gearbox than the MX-4, but there's no belt, so what the gearbox does is it takes the power from the motor to the gearbox, and that transmits it to the chain drive on the other side. One downside of this is it requires maintenance. You do have to change the oil on the gearbox at uh, predetermined intervals. These are make for a quieter ride, but some people don't like gearboxes, some people do. Uh, the jury is still out as far as I'm concerned. This bike is rated as 160 pounds. Now the E-Ride Pro is about 140 pounds. And I can tell you guys, when I got this bike delivered, the box, I live on the second story of an apartment and uh, picking up this box was a nightmare. This is super heavy. You're definitely, and uh, I have to say I'm above average strength level. <laughs> Yeah. 
lightweight. Now, and uh, I could not get this one up the stairs. I have drugged many e-bike boxes up the stairs here, and this is the first one that broke me. But 160 pounds is 20 pounds heavier. We're gonna have to see how that feels while we're out riding. We need to cut the brown wire here to make this, to take out the speed limiter. And it looks like it's the same method as the MX-4. So you need to take off this plastic panel that's up here, and you gotta dig out this harness, and you're gonna see on the bottom of this harness that it conveniently left a brown wire left out here with the loop on it. And what you wanna do is just get this in here, cut that, and now your speed is unrestricted. Let me go ahead and turn the bike on now. We're gonna start over with these switches here. Over here is your headlight switch on or off. And the funny thing is, is why does the E-Ride Pro, the first E-Moto that had a, a headlight switch as an option? I don't know why all of them didn't have it by default, but nevertheless, that's the world we live in. You have your horn here. That is a super loud horn. You have your nice Teloria branded brake handles. Over here on your display gives you all your basic information that you need, your speed, and if you press up or down on the arrows here, that goes through your regenerative braking settings. Press the mode button here in the middle. We'll toggle through your three drive levels, which are eco mode, sport mode, and hyper performance mode. But I'll tell you more about those when we actually take this on the road tomorrow. And going over here to the other side, something I'm really interested in trying here is the regenerative braking button here. So this is, we'll toggle your regenerative braking and it looks like it's linear here. So you can actually press it and use more or less. But again, I'll have to show you more of that when we're on the road tomorrow. Other than that, we have your typical rubberized grips here and we have your full twist throttle. I did get accustomed to having the full color display on the E-Ride Pro, but uh, this one seems fine. It gives you all your basic information that you're gonna need and uh, we'll see how we like it tomorrow. And for reference guys, this is what a six foot two rider looks like on the uh, Telaria Sting MX-5. I have to say it does feel a little small, but all these bikes in general are a bit small. I am probably gonna end up putting a set of riser bars on here, but I'll know more about that when I take this thing for its initial ride. You know, one thing I did find kind of funny is it said maximum recommended rider weight, 220 pounds. Well, I'm 245 pounds, plus I usually wear a backpack and stuff. So I don't think it's gonna be a problem, but I did think it's kind of funny that this says a top of recommended weight of 220 pounds, where I think their E-Ride maximum rider weight of 300 pounds. So take that into account for what it is. But overall, this feels nice and plush. And I have to say, this has just a smoother feeling with the suspension than the E-Ride does. The E-Ride kind of just makes noise when you uh, move around on the suspension travel. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the initial look at the Solaria Sting MX-5. I will be taking it for its maiden voyage tomorrow. But I did get some bad news in the course of filming this video. You know, it does turn out that the Chase Infinite Money hack is actually illegal. And now, unfortunately, I find myself in a very significant amount of debt. So if you guys could do me a favor and possibly watch this video maybe six to seven million times each, that'd really help me pay for my legal defense and to help pay off this bike. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will catch you in tomorrow's video when we take this bad boy on the road. Peace.